Hi everybody, Shannon and Karen with Wandering Out Yonder. Today we are going to bring to you guys a video in the series, the Appalachian Trail Museum and the community that surrounds it. Now this is a pretty cool area for us. Um, this is, we are standing in front of the storage units that are used by the Appalachian Trail Museum and they hold the artifacts. Right. right. So we spent a lot of time with these people last summer, getting to know the volunteers, getting to know what makes the AT Museum work. Getting behind the scenes mm -hmm. is a whole whole different story. All right. There's so much involved in maintaining the museum, bringing in new displays and new things to share with the public about the history of the Appalachian Trail and so forth and so on. And so people will donate their things, their books, their backpacks, all kinds of things. Um, and so it is the job of these volunteers to come in here, organize it, sort it, and catalog it, catalog it, document it. Yep. So there's a whole lot when you, if you have a chance to go over to the Appalachian Trail Museum, I believe it'll be open in April, um, go. Um, and while you're there, think about this. There's That's all kinds of things, yeah, all <laughs> kinds of things going on behind the scenes that help maintain everything that happens in that museum. Yeah, there. Oh, you want us to check that off your paper? That one can go in the box for that year because okay. when I got to looking at it, it's not a Ridge Runner's journal; it's a hiker journal that he. Had, yeah. How long have you been working on this project, Becky? <sighs> Was it three years ago? I, yeah that I came up to help Jerry and Sandy do um, inventory, whatever that was at the time. And I saw all these Sultan registers back here. And when I first visited the museum, that was my first question is, are the old registers available? And they said, yes, but not really. <laughs> I said, well, what does that mean? Well, they're in our storage unit. And so a couple of years later, I said, well, let me, I'm gonna go up to the storage unit and help. And that's when I saw them all. And they're just, they were, not in any kind of order, just in whatever box they came donated in or got stuck in. So I said, well, I'll start inventorying these. Mm -hmm. So the first two years was just taking them out, writing them and getting an inventory and putting them right back in the same box, not organized in any way. And then once we had a full inventory, then it was like, okay, now let's organize them mm -hmm. so that we can find them. Mm -hmm. And so that's no. this. Was there something else? A step I skipped? Oh, scanning! Scanning! <laughs> I was gonna, I was gonna bring that up. <laughs> yeah. So then we took those boxes again, one by one, scanned the registers page by page by page, and now we have almost sixty thousand images. Oh my gosh! Of these registers, and I think, I think there's around thirteen or fourteen hundred individual registers. I've I've lost track, but I could look in my database. Um, that, that then becomes about 60,000 images. So we did that. They were still in those boxes without being organized in any way. So then this year we've pulled them out and we've put them into boxes that are labeled by year. So somebody that hiked it in, let's say 1987 could come up here, pull out the box for 1987 and maybe 1988 and find all the registers from that year and sit and go through them or they can ask for the external hard drive, which has a copy, and pull up the folder for 1987 and look through them digitally in that way instead of the hard copy. Okay. So will that hard drive be available at the museum? Very good question. It's that is still in discussion. Okay. Right. My hope, and I'll document this, my hope is that there will be one external hard drive hanging, it has a handle, hanging in the uh, library upstairs. Okay only available to librarians and maybe researchers that are up there uh, by appointment. And then I hope to have another external drive that's downstairs in the closet behind the docent desk. And when a hiker comes in like I did and says, so do you have the registers from 1992? Well, yes, I do. And take that external drive and plug it in to the USB port in the hiker uh, computer and bring up that year and then they can sit there and go through them. Excellent. So that piece is still in discussion, but that's my hope. So the, the um, Appalachian Trail Museum has a computer inside the building that the hiker would be able to access then. That's my hope, okay. yes. Awesome. There is a computer there. Right. right now we use it to get to the ATC uh, 2000 miler uh, database. And so a person can go on and find their picture 
of when they took their picture in front of the ATC headquarters in Harper's Ferry. Mm -hmm. But that's the only thing that computer is used for. So what I'd like to be able to do is plug in the external hard drive, and I have tried it, it works, and bring up the images that we spent years <laughs> scanning, 60,000 images. And it'll be easy to find because they're in file folders by year, and in those years or by decade. So, and then inside those file folders, the uh, shelters are alphabetized. So they're not in order from south to north or north to south, but alphabetized shelters and campsites. So, okay. Or if they wanna look at like all the hostels that we have registers for, or um, some of the restaurants and hotels, that's in a separate file folder and also in a separate box okay. up here. All right. So. All right, so these are the journals now. We've, they've spent a lot of time getting all of this organized, but as you can see, everything's been placed inside an acid-free box, alphabetized, and by year. And we are neatly, right now, trying to get them organized and on the shelves in the back here. All right, Becky, so what are the oldest um, of these that you have? So the oldest ones we have are all PATC cabin registers, which aren't really shelters on the on the AT. But what I'd like to find out is back in those days, there weren't as many shelters. So did the hikers, were they allowed to use the cabins like they were shelters? I don't know the answer to that, but I want to find out. Okay. So the oldest ones we have um, are two from a, a PATC cabin from the 1950 to 55. Cool. And the one cool. spans five years. It took that long to fill it. And then the other one's 1950 to 51. Oh, and here's another. There's two more PATC cabins. One's 1945 to 49. And another one, Wolf Gap, that's 1950 to 55. All right, so what was probably the coolest thing? I know you had to have read some of them. What was the coolest thing that you read? Which, or that me, you came across? For mm -hmm. me... My first interest was every time I was scanning a 1992 shelter, which is the year I did my through hike, mm -hmm. I had to stop and read it cover to cover. Mm -hmm. And if I was still in touch with some of those hikers, I would snap a picture and send it to them via text mm -hmm. message. And, it had to be cool. Yeah, so that was fun. But um, I really enjoyed reading the oldest registers from the folks that hiked it, you know, in the 1960s and 70s, mm -hmm. especially the through hikers, because back then it was still pretty rare. Okay. And so to read their thoughts and to imagine them, because they were hiking pretty solo. Um, so Without they, the they technologies did. that we have now, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. But it did surprise me that they got to know each other on the trail because they would communicate with each other through these registers you know, in the 1970s. Um, I also noticed that those early registers, they didn't use trail names yet. So I don't know when those trail names became oh, okay. a thing. Oh. But, you know, in the 1950s, 60s, maybe into the uh, 70s, they were still using real names okay. and not trail names. And I wonder who even started that. Now that you've said that, yeah. I never even thought about that. I don't know. Okay. Um, the uh, the guy that does the Green Tunnel okay. podcast, mm -hmm. he may know. I okay. can't his name right now, mm -hmm. but he may know. Okay. So, yeah. so did you ever run across Earl Schaefer's? Uh, I did, um, at least once. Okay. And I actually marked in the notes on that register, Earl Schaefer entry. Okay. So I know he hiked it, what, three times? Yes. Okay. Yes, and I'm right. sure he's in there more than I found, but... Right. I do remember once finding it, noting it in the notes on that particular register. I don't remember right. what year. Okay. So I was looking for some others, you know, like Grandma Gatewood, I would have loved to have found hers, but she probably predated <laughs> registers. Right, right. <laughs> so, mm -hmm. right. Yeah. so you can see the completed project. A lot of work in here. Oh, isn't it beautiful? It is. It's all boxed up. Yeah. So how does this make you feel? Oh, wonderful. Does it? Yeah. Awesome. Good. And not only is this done, but all the scanning is done. What does she have you doing today, Andy? Oh, I'm, I'm going to look through these boxes that we've uh, reboxed and just look for things like textile items that might need separate wrapping and that, that sort of thing. Okay. I mean, ideally, what we want to do is, um, for some of these things, like some of the tents and parka material that got kind of crispy over the years, mm -hmm. lay them out in big, flat boxes so they don't have as many folds. 
Right, and less likely to deteriorate. Right, and so. then maybe interleave them with tissue or whatever. Okay. So, and right. then, but a lot of it is just this sort of thing. It's a hodgepodge of, wow. of all kinds of materials. And this is all things that have been sent to you guys, right? Yeah. From uh, previous hikers mm -hmm. and, okay, very cool. Yeah, and they're by, uh, as far as I know, because I'm only starting on right. this recently, mm -hmm. is by the person. So, okay. everything in this box will belong to, to one person. All right. Super cool. And this is in the second storage unit. And this is your next project, I guess, for you guys to work yeah, on? Yeah, it's going all, through the all of this. Are over there. Get wow. them sorted, get them in better boxes, get them laid out, folded better, and then put in here. Okay. And then we'll probably go ahead and uh, as we get more boxes, more different sizes box, size boxes, then separate some of the things that need to be okay. laid out in better, you know, flatter configurations okay all right jerry so you're starting on the next project now right we go back to our old project the original <laughs> project room or anything in between yeah but we wanted to get becky's project done and that is done now look at the tables we can work on <laughs> so immediately moving on right right okay. well we, we got a good librarian who was interested in the storage unit mm -hmm. and he took one look at what was up here and said we really need to get these into better boxes mm -hmm. and he came up with the idea of the acid-free boxes and then he researched and told us what to buy and now what we're doing is taking the inventory from all of the shelves that had been in here and we're reboxing them into the good acid-free storage boxes. And labeling and, and yeah. And then relabeling, re-inventory, and that's what is happening with this project. Okay. Right. So it looks like Sandy's also, everything's going digital as well? Everything is digital, and she has sent that out. Um, so, and they have looked for things because, well, we had uh, Mills, Mills Kelly. Yeah. Do I have the right name? Yeah, Mills Kelly. At the... He came up here, he does a blog. And he came up here, he wanted to talk about old, old, old equipment. And with her inventory, we could pull out old stoves, old boots, old packs, old water filters. And then he talked about them. He, he's not got visual on his, but mm -hmm. we could look at them and talk about them. And um, we had Julie and Becky, were you here for that? For helping with Mills Kelly blog? No, no, no. I was okay. on vacation or something. Okay, so anyway, we talked about some of the equipment and how, you know, compared how heavy it was. We talked and how, about the old stuff. The old Julie stuff. talked about, about the, the new stuff. stuff. We learned about the brain of packs, which we had no idea about. So, um, and so her inventory was very good for that. We also, they're working on a new exhibit down at the Museum of Trail Maintainers. And so we had to get the old equipment that they used. And with this inventory, we could come up she picked out the one she wanted and we came up and pulled the equipment and now it's down in one of the bathrooms in the, in the museum waiting for the museum to be the exhibit to be done. So that's what this inventory is really good for exhibits. Mm -hmm. And um, that is our hope. She, Hancho put together the, uh, what do you have? You have a, a list. Inventory, so a spread, a spreadsheet, spreadsheet, or spreadsheet. A spreadsheet. Thank oh, you. The spreadsheet. Okay. I didn't know okay. what, where you were and, going. And you put, um, I, you know, subject headings I have on them. Subject categories like clothing and gear and written materials, and then subheadings like pants and shirts. And so then, by the time you guys get finished organizing, you go to that. And say, oh, here it's over here. Is that, right? is that what you're, that's yeah. the goal? And okay. How long, yeah. how long have you guys been working on? This well, particular part. took us about a winter to do the inventory, the original Two years, inventory. Up probably. Two, did we come up two years? Yeah, because yes. it was during I, the pandemic. I joined you this. Yeah. Oh, okay. Okay. So you guys were the original pioneers on this project? Uh, yeah. Making it real. Yeah. We were the original yeah. okay. pioneers. Yeah. Um, the Sam had the... She's, we, we disagree on who first started it. The Whether project, it was Nate or Sam. <laughs> Nate or okay. Sam. One of them had the idea of that we needed to be inventorying. Sam built these shelves right. and he was going to build more, but then there was they, no room. <laughs> right, they brought in the stuff. And he, they had um, an intern who came up and started doing inventory. And he and put that was a long time ago. That was a long time ago. And they, but it was not complete. And never finished because he was just an intern for a short time mm -hmm. and 
so it didn't really ever get finished. Mm -hmm. And then people give things to the museum all the time, all year long, all year long. It gets shipped in or brought in. Mm -hmm. So you guys didn't really ever have to ask for it? No. No. I think maybe in the beginning they had a list of things that they that they wanted mm -hmm. that they may have put out to like Alda or, or other you know in a hikers. magazine or something but that was before but that our was time. that was when they first started right. the museum and when we interviewed larry he told us that he had stuff like shoved in closets oh in right? his house yes. in his garage yes. okay. in his basement his okay. closets. Yeah. 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 yeah yeah all right so that all came up here and then we got stuff from like like we said before we got stuff from the apc atc and so it's just built so I would be curious, Sandy and Jerry, what inspired you two to want to be a part of this? Well, we need for organization. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> so, so did you walk in here one day and it was like, we need to be here? No. Okay. Um, the pandemic happened and the museum did not open. And we kept saying, you know, what can we do for you? There's mm -hmm. got to be something. And he said, well... Our inventory needs a lot of help. And we walked in and yes, we said, yes, we are not leaving this place because it was really, really bad. You, you think it looks bad now? Ask Becky. You couldn't yeah. walk through. Pardon. You couldn't walk through. And I would say it does not look bad. It looks really good. Right. So, yeah. But I'm but sure it, there's I, a lot of hard work involved in that. Yeah. I have some pictures. Well, we're uh, walking here. Oh, do you? There was kind of an aisle way right there. Right. That, was it? All right, so same question. What is what is, in your opinion, the most unique thing that you have come across in searching through these boxes? Or that you were the most excited to be able to handle? Well, the most unique thing to me is that leg. I tell everybody about that prosthetic <laughs> leg <laughs> and hike the trail, and we have it. But it was also interesting, a man who used to repair boots near um, Hamburg, when he died, we got all of it. We got his last, his boot last, and we got a lot of his equipment. But I'm also, Mama Boots stuff is here, and she's someone I've heard of. Yeah. And then, you know, finding her stuff, and then Grandma Gatewood, we found more of her stuff a couple weeks ago, and it was like, oh my gosh, we got a hat, we got a quilt. Um, so that to me, and then, and then when we uncovered the parachute, yeah, Larry. Holy! Oh, yeah. Whoa! Yeah. yeah, we have this parachute. Yeah. So a lot of times, you know, finally I said we have to sit Larry down, and we have to get his memory because why do we have some of these things? Who are these people mm -hmm. that we have? So Sandy went through the inventory with Larry, and got a lot of backstories, which was really interesting. Oh, good, good, good. We just, I just have snippets of who these people are that gave us stuff or the, or whose stuff it is. Mm -hmm. So with the inventory, we've got a picture of what's in the box mostly, and then the inventory of what's in the box, and then a little bit about the person. Okay. All right. So I've got that together. And she's got pictures all. But these are the pictures of. In yeah. here before we well no these are the after pictures no no now, are these just copies that you're personal are these yeah, are also these are, going to be available then for the museum no these are my personal ones what we did linda who was the original librarian wanted to know what kind of space was up here for her stuff oh so she wanted pictures. so she wanted pictures to know because she'd never been up here and she wanted to know you can see us during the pandemic so that's that's why we have pictures so and then Linda the mackay know... mackay collection was was over here we had to inventory those boxes of books that's they're now over on the other side uh, the right where we're standing now, you guys just had stacks of boxes. Yeah, stacks of boxes, okay. yeah. Which are now stacks yes, of boxes the, over there. <laughs> the, the, we cleaned out an, an area here so that we could walk through so that we could see what was in there. Oh, yeah. There's the leg. There's, there's the, the leg. leg. <laughs> the last park I was in before moving to Harper's Ferry where we did exhibits was a park that was 
in low it was st just starting we didn't have a collection so we had to actually build a collection so we needed a scope of collection statement we wrote that and then started collecting things that were appropriate for the textile industry and then trying to find space to put them and boxes and the whole everything you're doing here right. so he knows how to do what we're doing starting so, with the scope of collection statement. yeah he's working that. he's working on, he's that. Working on that so we can get oh that's very important for when that person comes in and said this is the this is the newspaper from the 1936 flood and everybody in town saved them and they all try to bring them in and donate right. them and they're all crumbly acidic you know newspapers from 50 years ago yeah. And that's the last thing you want. Or these yeah. are the socks I yeah. hike the trail. <laughs> yeah. And these are the socks I hike the trail. Right. So that's, you know, so, boy, we put Andy to work. <laughs> I move boxes. <laughs> well, he moves boxes, but he also knows what's important to keep. And he knows how to really store them better. He knew that these boxes were good, but he could get us some bigger ones for the oversized stuff. And then he knew about the tissue paper to put the cloth material in because we get pants shirts, socks, coats, what else have we had? And he knows, you know, they need a little more saving than just sticking them in the box. Yeah, you don't want to mix materials. I mean, right now they're sort of mixed because we're trying to keep everything together, I guess, right? Right. To who the person is, but eventually it'd be nice to, you know, not have a metal object next to a leather object next to a cloth object. Right. Without mm -hmm. some kind of buffering material. And right. we're already seeing paying for that because this stuff's up here with no heat and no air conditioning and all mixed together. So that is our next project is okay. to rebox everything here in better boxes mm -hmm. and get them better stored. And hope you can preserve them for a long time. For a long okay. time. Right. So, but from your interview with Larry, I learned a little bit more about why he keeps things. So that helped me a little better because a lot of this stuff was like, why? <laughs> So then I understand a little more now that you've interviewed him. But. Mm -hmm. According to Larry, yeah, well, the history is in the making, right? You mm -hmm. don't know now what is going to be important. Right. Mm -hmm. yep. And Andy has underscored that too. Yeah. All right. So, well, so the registers are on this oh external hard drive. Oh dear. We're going to grab it. You have to open up the files. And here's the inventories, so which I'll go to in a minute. But here's the scanned registers scanned journals out. registers by year okay. and then i've got them divided up by so decade box you want so if you open up the 1980s and then go to each year to 1987 80. i know it was a big year so go to curly maple gap shelter oh, and then all these Five. registers open up wow pictures poetry oh my goodness and you can just click through oh, them and this is what we have almost sixty thousand wow. images and how long did it take you to do all of these drawings oh, uh, this is 2024 i think it was started in the winter of 2022 wow. <laughs> wow that is so much work and so cool. But it's everything cool. that the museum currently has that we have found is now scanned. But more will keep coming in. So we'll, but now as they come in, we'll scan them, put them into the inventory. It won't be, it won't be so monumental. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. So I also have the scan journals that aren't hiker shelter registers. So um, Clara Cassidy used to have a hostel in Harper's Ferry. So here's her notebook that the ATC gave us. Um, and that's, that covers about a decade and a half. So yeah, here's the Bascom Lodge, Iron Masters Hostel, which is managed by the museum, Quincy's Pizza. So any, if any hotels or other restaurants send us, they'll go into this category. Um, ATC Mid-Atlantic Office, which sits right on the AT, they would put a register out. So these are hiker journal so you can see you know the artwork wow. for some of these folks That's is so just cool. beautiful mm -hmm. poetry wow. you know it's just very, their very thoughts cool. on yeah. what are at that moment mm -hmm. what do you want wow look at the socks yeah i don't think there's any point in trying to jam this stuff into those boxes okay okay mm -hmm. so about 79 is and this is just some of the articles that have come out of the, one of the, the boxes. Box. No, um, I'm just going to mark that these are the things that um, Samuel Morris, who must have been an intern, 
did, but we're rearranging all the boxes, so those are kind of moot at this point. So. Okay, so, oh, the volunteer's name is on here and everything. It did help us identify some mm -hmm. things. Oh, yeah, okay. So I have reflector oven. That's what's in that bag in uh -huh. the envelope. Yeah. That's the reflector oven. Okay, the oil lamp, the floor one toad oven, a flat stove. Oh, that must be what... Thank you. That's a toaster. So, are those, those signs aren't going to fit in the box? Are they? Another uh, kerosene lamp. Look at that. A thunderbolt. <laughs> authentic chamber pot with a camera. Okay, what's going to fit in one box? <laughs> well, that's going to be loose. It's going to look like maybe two boxes. Okay. volunteering time. Hi, welcome to the museum. They are always looking for volunteers and of course donations are a great help for them as well. They do keep a donation box here and by becoming a member of the Appalachian Trail Museum. For more information, please visit atmuseum.org.